TCGs from the Crypt. When I was a kid, there was nothing more exciting than running home after school and turning on the TV to tune in to the latest episodes of some of my favorite cartoons. There were so many amazing shows to check out, and as time went on, more and more kept coming out, so I felt like I never had enough time to watch them all. And sure, a lot of them were just advertisements for toys, but I didn't care they were great. Mummies Alive, Gargoyles, and Scooby-Doo were some of my favorites, but there was one cartoon I never skipped. One I would flip the channel to whenever I got the chance. Transformers. Transformers really needs no introductions. The ongoing war between the heroic Autobots and the villainous Decepticons has been ingrained into the pop culture subconscious for the last 40 years. What started as a 1980s cartoon made to sell action figures to kids has ballooned in the following decades into a multimedia franchise with comics, video games, movies, and an absolutely massive toy line. Every few years, it seems like there's something new with the series. There's dozens of different cartoons telling their own version of the story, so much so that pretty much every generation has their own favorite version. Me personally, I was a huge fan of Beast Wars. And yeah, the CGI they used for that show hasn't really aged all that well, but it has this charm to it that I don't think any other version can beat. Transformers is kind of a timeless classic, a series that appeals to audiences because of how it depicts the conflict of good versus evil and the moral stances taken by the Transformers themselves. Optimus Prime is cool, sure, but he's also easy to relate to since his never-ending battle for peace and freedom is something we can all empathize with. Also, I just really like it when Big Robot punches other Big Robot. While Transformers as a toy line has had varying degrees of success since its inception, its parent company, Hasbro, has always looked for ways to expand the franchise and try out new things. In the late 2010s, they decided to try and capture the tabletop market by releasing a Transformers trading card game, developed by their subsidiary, Wizards of the Coast. Now, if you're somehow unfamiliar with Wizards of the Coast, they're kind of a titan of the TCG world. Over the last 30 years, this company has released several trading card games to various levels of success, and most importantly, they made the very first, Magic the Gathering. That's right, the Transformers card game would be developed by the company that basically created the entire genre. The first set, aptly named Wave 1, released on September 18th back in 2018, and it was quite something to look at. Sealed boxes were much larger than people were used to because, well, the packs inside were larger. These things absolutely dwarf any TCG booster pack I've ever seen, but there's a good reason for that. You see, inside each and every booster pack in the game, there's an oversized card. A character card. And these bad boys? Well, they're the main focus of the game. Unlike many other card games where your goal is to lower your opponent's life points to zero, in Transformers, your only objective is to beat their robots. Once all of their character cards have been defeated, you win. Of course, how you get there isn't so simple. Here's the basics of the game. If you look at the bottom of the alt mode of these character cards, you'll see that they have a line of stars down there. All character cards, plus some other cards in the game, have a varying number of these stars, and you can have any number of these cards in your deck as long as the total number of stars is 25 or less, which is a kind of neat way to keep the power level in check. As you may have guessed, character cards also have two sides, and each side has different stats that determine how powerful a character is at a given time. We'll talk more about that in a bit. The other basic card types are action cards and upgrade cards, collectively called battle cards, since they help out with, well, the battle. Upgrades are further split into weapons, armor, and utility, and each character card can have one of each applied at a given time. When a game begins, you put all your character cards in play in their alt modes. Then, each player shuffles up their deck and draws their starting hand of three cards. When your turn begins, you draw a card. Then, you get three actions that you can do in any order. 
You can transform one of your characters, you can play an action card, and you can play an upgrade card onto a character. Though I need to stress that the first two turns of the game are different. The player who goes first only gets to flip over a character, and the second player only gets to flip and use one of the two card types. After that though, turns play as normal. After you've performed all your actions, it's time for battle. Battling in the Transformers TCG is pretty straightforward. On each of your turns, you can select one of your untapped character cards and tap them to attack one of your opponent's tapped cards. And if none of your opponent's characters are tapped, well, don't worry, because then you can just select any of them. Once the target has been selected, both players flip over the top two cards of their deck. Then they take a look at the little colored squares in the top right corner of their cards. These colored icons determine what bonuses are applied to the battle. For each orange icon revealed by the attacker, their character gets that number added to their attack. The defender adds the number of blue icons they reveal to their defense. And white icons? They're special. The first time each player reveals a white icon per turn, they flip over two additional cards. Once that's over, the numbers are added up, and if the attacker's attack power is higher than the defender's defense power, the difference is dealt to the defender as damage. And once a character's health hits zero, they're defeated. And like I said before, once all of your opponent's character cards are defeated, the game is over and you win. Some things worth noting are that when a character is tapped, it doesn't untap at the start of your turn like in some other card games. It stays tapped until something causes it to untap. And while there are card effects that can untap a character, usually what ends up happening is both players play until all their characters are tapped. Once this happens, all characters are untapped together, and the turn player's turn ends. Adding on to this, if you still have untapped characters while all of your opponent's characters are tapped, you can attack again in the same turn until you have no untapped characters left, which brings us to before, where all the cards untap. Besides that, decks contain 40 cards, and something neat for this card game is that you can't deck out. If your deck ever runs out of cards, you simply shuffle your discard pile back into it and start over, which means games really do go on until all your opponent's characters are beaten. It's a simple but satisfying game loop, and it's easy to see why so many people loved this game. After the release of Wave 1 in 2018, a further four sets saw release. There was Rise of the Combiners, which introduced Combiner teams. These were kind of cool. Having multiple cards come together to form one big character was always nice. Unfortunately, these cards folded, which is something I'll talk about in a bit. Then there was War for Cybertron Siege 1 and 2, which were sets that tied into the toy storyline that was going on at the time. And then in 2020, there was the Titan Masters Attack set, which was unconnected to the previous two sets' story and just kind of did its own thing. It also introduced the Stratagem cards, new cards that started the game in play alongside their respective character cards, adding new complexities to deck building and gameplay. Overall, the Transformers TCG was a pretty good game, and more importantly, it's super easy to pick up and play, with its basic rules feeling intuitive while the skill ceiling remains pretty high. The core game mechanics and the keywords used are all easy to grasp, and sure, there's a bit of a coin toss involved for battles, but thanks to upgrades and strategies, you never feel like you're relying entirely on luck to get a win out. Transformers really stands out with its character cards. Yeah, other card games can have cards that lead your deck or represent you, but these oversized cards are real eye-catchers that made not just the gameplay stand out, but the sealed product as well with the oversized packs. And yes, the oversized cards are a bit inconvenient, sleeving them up requires special oversized sleeves and all that, but I still think they're really cool. As an aside, I also really like the star system they implemented for the game. It helped bring a bit of balance by preventing players from just including all the best characters in their deck at once. Still, what I like most about the character cards is their fantastic art. It helps that the art used for pretty much all of them is a striking, action-filled piece, really captures the heart of the Transformers franchise. 
Now, of course, if I compliment the character art, I need to mention the fact that most of the other art used in the game is, unfortunately, reused assets, usually from the Transformers comics. Now, don't get me wrong, I do like the comics, but in my experience, reused assets are usually a sign of a willingness to cut corners on production. It's not a damning feature by any means, as I do think this is a great game, but it's the most disappointing part of the game, in my opinion. One more thing that needs to be said is that the Transformers card game was very experimental. Wizards of the Coast is no stranger to trying out weird or unorthodox mechanics in its card games. Magic features all kinds of keywords or rules that are pretty strange at first glance. But with Transformers, they got really experimental, especially with the combiner cards. I mentioned before that these are folding cards, and that's a technology I don't think I've seen used in any other card game. The concept is simple. All Transformers have two modes, and these cards do as well. However, they also have a hidden third mode, one that lets them become part of something bigger. Flavorfully, this is an amazing mechanic, and I don't think it's a bad idea to experiment with new ways of approaching card games as games. But I need to stress how bad these folding cards really are. The material keeping these two halves of the card connected is not strong at all, and I've seen these things tear easily with only slight mishandling. Trading cards are already a frail collectible, but if you introduce moving parts to that collectible, you end up with something that is far more fragile than I think anyone would like. Like I said, I do think these are cool, but I also just don't think any card game wants something like this. Imagine how bad it would feel picking up your big combiner after the game's over, only for one of your pieces to rip in half. That would be awful. That aside though, the game genuinely is a lot of fun, and I remember tournaments for it being consistently well attended for the two years it was in print. It definitely helped that this was, well, Transformers, and not some other random IP, because that definitely brought in people who would otherwise not be interested in card games. Of course, if it was so popular, why did it fail? Well, you see, back in 2020, just before the launch of Titan Masters, Wizards of the Coast announced the end to the game, which came as kind of a huge shock to the community at the time. The announcement was a simple one, with Hasbro saying, quote, While the retailer and player community continued to grow, our product offerings didn't meet the expectations of the broader fanbase to engage further with the brand. The announcement also cites the issues caused by the pandemic at the time, which definitely hampered production and in-store events, but Magic, another Hasbro card game, would have been just as affected by the pandemic, and it's still going to this day. Reading this announcement makes it feel like Hasbro was almost intentionally vague with why they cancelled the game, but my theory is that the TCG simply wasn't creating the sales numbers they were hoping it would. There's also no doubt in my mind that production cost played a huge role in getting the game cancelled. Transformers packs definitely cost more to make. We've got a normal pack of cards and an oversized card nestled between two pieces of cardboard inside another plastic pack. That's just way more materials than a normal TCG pack has stuffed inside. Yeah, it stands out more and makes pack openings way more memorable, but if you're bankrupting yourself for that wow factor, it's probably not worth it. And I really do believe it was that simple. Transformers just wasn't making enough money to cover the cost of production, and Wizards, Hasbro, cut their losses, dooming Transformers to join countless other games in the TCG crypt. It's unfortunate considering that this is such a good game and it's part of such a beloved IP, but it's not all doom and gloom. As a relatively recent card game and, again, because it's Transformers, this card game actually has a fairly lively online community and physical tournaments happen all the time. In fact, if you head over to Reddit, you'll see that there's still groups dedicated to keeping this game alive, four years after it has been officially cancelled. 
If you've never tried the Transformers card game before, I highly recommend it. Sealed product is very cheap to get these days, and the game is both easy to learn and a lot of fun. Of course, if you're not into card games and are just a fan of Transformers, I can still recommend this as a nice collectible. I cannot stress enough that the Transformers themselves look great, and I think these oversized cards look amazing displayed next to their toy counterparts. Overall, it's a great game that just didn't make its company enough money. It's been cancelled, but it's not quite dead yet. So long as Transformers fans pick up the cards, the battle between Autobots and Decepticons is never truly over. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed, then please consider leaving a like, subscribing to the channel, and sharing this video with a friend. The algorithm is one bot I just can't fight alone. Do you have a card game you'd like me to talk about? If so, feel free to leave a comment below, and if you ever wanted to chat with me and others in the community, come join the Discord. And of course, if you want to support the channel directly, head on over to Patreon, where you'll get early access to my videos and their scripts. Thanks again, and have a great day.